Hey Drew, it's Titwan, the founder of Core Gardeners. Titwan, nice to meet you. I've been looking forward to this. Same here. It's been a while I want to meet someone in the tech and innovation world to help us save core reef ecosystems. Do you remember this call we had almost two years ago now? I do. I think that was the, my first day without having a job. Exactly. That was your first day uh, doing uh, ocean conservation mm -hmm. and you, you had no plan at this time. No plan. I knew, I knew I didn't want to continue doing what I was doing. I knew I wanted to help the ocean, but I didn't know how. Okay. So guys, today I'm here with Drew, Dr. Drew Gray, Head of Technology at Core Gardeners and helping us with the first project on the innovation and tech side, Reef OS, and we'll be uh, talking about it. But first, Drew, can you uh, give us a little bit about your background, your past experiences? Yeah, yeah. So my background is in machine learning, as you know, but my whole career I've been focusing on self-driving cars. Sure. When I was in grad school, um, doing my PhD work, I was funded by an automotive company. Okay. So all of my research had to do with cars. And when self-driving cars started getting more popularity, I kind of just went down this path, worked at five self-driving car companies. Yeah. Uh, worked on Tesla's autopilot, worked on Uber's autonomous car. Um, mainly focused on computer vision and deep learning. Sure. And during my time in that field, I kept thinking how cool this technology was in the first place, how powerful it is, and how many things it enabled for a product like a self-driving car. Yeah. But I started getting kind of tired of the product idea of building a taxi and thinking, how could this technology be useful for something really, really important? Yeah, I remember during one of our first calls, you, you were telling me that you were impressed by all the improvements in the automobile uh, industry. Yeah. And like, just imagine if we just take some of those improvements and put it for ocean conservation. Yeah, I found that the best machine learning models could basically do as good as a human can do on any particular task. You know, in self-driving cars, it's identifying cars and people um, and bicyclists. But in ocean conservation, imagine, right? It's identifying fish and coral disease and coral bleaching um, and biodiversity and things like this. Yeah, and so at that time, me, I was on the other side of the world writing some ideas for Coral Gardeners project. And I was, I always told my team, guys, one day I'm going to find someone at the Silicon Valley that will make those dreams come true. and. I was dreaming of having connected coral nursery, transplant reef, and being able to measure in real time the, the temperature, the growth of the coral, and etc. And at that time, that was the moment where you, you started be, being tired of the, of the industry. Yeah, yeah, I started just really, so I, I got into engineering in the first place, really in the beginning, because I was inspired by ocean robotics. I just thought it was a cool thing when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and as, as I kind of grew up and as my career grew up, I never forgot about that passion for the ocean, but alongside I was learning more that it wasn't just cool to go explore the bottom of the ocean, but there's actually a need now for technology to help the ocean. Sure. And sort of this passion grew into this, this like desire to help. Yeah. Um, and I knew at this point I had enough technical experience to help. I just really didn't know how to yet. <laughs> that's why I thought it was so serendipitous that I left my career, honestly with no plan, and that's a crazy thing to do sometimes. Um, and that was the first day we met. We had no idea it would turn into this. <laughs> that's that's crazy part of the story. And then I remember us doing that call and I was, okay, so what's your plan right now? I just want to help the ocean. And I start sharing my, my dreams and my vision to have that innovation and technology helping us scale up faster. And you, I remember with virtual check, okay, yeah. dude, let's make this happen. <laughs> like, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the, the start of the journey. And that was more than a year and a half ago. And uh, we already did the first expedition on the field here with our scientists and the refrigeration team. And today, that's the second expedition with mm -hmm. more engineers. So the project is called ReefOS. Tell us a little bit about our project, ReefOS. That's the first project of the Core Gardeners Lab, the innovation team. Yeah. What, it, what is it about? So since that first meeting we met, right, we, we created a department at Coral Gardeners called Coral Gardeners Labs. And this is where we invent new technology that could help the reef. Um, and the first project that we're building is Reef OS. It's, a, it's basically an AI platform for analyzing data on a coral reef. Sure. So imagine there's a coral scientist down there. There's so many things that she can do with measuring coral growth rate, seeing coral disease and bleaching, measuring uh, the fish populations and the different types of fish, the biodiversity. But you can only be down there for, you know, 45 minutes on yeah. a scuba tank and you just can't be in the water every day. But with a connected reef with this technology, we can basically have you know a 24/7 view of the reef, where we can measure things like the physical and chemical oceanography. Of course, yes, so much data at the same yeah. time. Temperature and acidity, dissolved oxygen, the things that are really important. 
to understand the changes going on. But then even more powerfully, with a camera underwater, you kind of unlock the potential of what humans can do with our eyes. Yeah. So we can we can look at a reef and intuitively understand that things are getting worse, things are getting better, that our restoration techniques are being effective. Um, so uh, Reef OS is a connected reef using AI running on a camera to extract all of this data about the reef. I, I love it. It's For me, it's a dream coming true. Like to, to have right now our coral nurseries, having that live stream 24 seven and those sensors to measure the data and being able to like take decisions, make decisions based on, on this data is, is just an amazing thing. And I remember like this morning I was watching uh, right after I, I woke up the, the live stream and I was seeing those, this surgeon fish, we call it Mato in Taishan, and doing those, those like cleaning the couple different types of corals and having the artificial intelligence being able to tell us how many fish in, in live at the yeah. nursery and which one and what they are doing is just crazy. Yeah, and then really importantly, right, we can do impact assessments where we have a reef, it may have died unfortunately, we can start restoring this reef, yeah. put Reef OS there and we can measure the improvements, you know, quantitatively, for where sure. how many fish came back, how many different types of species, how many, what's the coral growth and the rate and everything. For sure, no, it's, it's a wonderful first project for the innovation team, Reef OS. I'm so glad that we are able to have those connected nurseries, connected reef, and also uh, work with the reef restoration team, with my, my good friends who, who started the project with me, Maurite Tayano and, and the team, and they can learn, learn how to do the AI, learn how to do the, the connected sensors, mm -hmm. super cool experience. Yeah, it was a really special moment teaching them how to use the labeling software to identify the fish, and of course they grew up here, they know all the fish perfectly. Yeah. Um, they were teaching me so much about it, and then with enough data, right, then pretty soon the algorithms can do this. <laughs> and we have just, you know, almost like a local expert just in the water all the time, just watching the reef. It's just crazy. And in the future, Reef West will play a, a crucial uh, part into our development. We would love to have like coral gardeners branches all around the world where local people take care of their local reef ecosystems. And the fact of being able to connect those coral nurseries, those reef with Reef OS technology and having sensors, cameras, AI, it's going to be really useful because we'll be able to improve not only our methods, our knowledge about the reef, and maybe in the future use those tools to, to create immersive experiences for all the community. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For Reef OS is primarily a tool for our scientists, right? Sure. And it works really well. We're in one location right now. And as we expand, it's really important to have continuity yeah. across the branches. So when we make a measurement, and we make uh, an assessment about the health of a reef, we need that to be the same type of measurement that we make in other reefs. For sure. So it, it's, uh, it's compared scientifically. And so Reef OS will be a tool that allow us to expand quickly yeah. and do this. For sure, for, for reef restoration and science purposes, it's, it's an inc incredible tool. And then of course, you know, the benefit of having a camera, not only all this, the science we're talking about, but then you can connect people to the reef where yeah. You know, seeing a live stream of underwater is so special. It's a different world. Yeah, imagine tomorrow someone who adopted a coral, which is in our nursery in Mooria, in the middle of nowhere, can dive in, see the coral growing, the AI, the feature, the data. Yeah. It's so cool to be able to educate people and, and make them live the adventure. Yeah, and show your friends this coral was this small when I got it. <laughs> and now look how big it is and look how big the reef is now. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. It's the beginning of a, a wonderful journey using innovation and tech. And uh, so that was the second trip on the field that you did. You brought some friends from like partners like View Into The Blue, mm -hmm. Trevor who be, was building all these cameras in the past. And uh, what, what did you do during that, that second expedition? So this expedition's been, been pretty intense. Yeah, <laughs> we, we it brought, went fast. It went really fast. We brought six big Pelican cases of gear, basically, <laughs> sensors and cameras. Um, and we spent 10 days installing it, you know, getting Cameras and running AI on cameras is, is like new and it's um, cutting edge technology. Yeah. But then getting this to work underwater yeah. is just adds this difficulty to it where, um, you know, all the cables need to be protected and it needs to go underwater and needs to be hidden and make sure you clear the reef. And so we spent a lot of time getting the sensors ready to start measuring. So getting the cameras, looking at the reef, Bro, getting the, everything connected. This week, I thought like the headquarters were like mini Silicon Valley, like yeah. a lab. With cable, camera, sensors everywhere. Yeah, we just unloaded and took over the headquarters completely. Yeah, yeah. and I remember Trevor telling us he was surprised by how much things Maurite or Tayano could do. Yeah. Using the, the sensor, the cable. Yeah, 
Yeah, some of the crew here now and those basically experts in making underwater cables. So cool. Which is really useful, yeah. Excellent. So second expedition now we have connected reef, connected nurseries, measuring the data in real life. We'll be able to, to learn from this and uh, and share more with the community in the future. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's my last day here today. I'll be back soon, but we we came here and did everything we, we wanted to. So yeah. success. So let's keep improving ReefOS and up to the next project. It's Andro. It's on. Thanks for watching, guys.